Good morning, everyone. Welcome to New Northwest Church. We are in the seventh week of our eight-week series, The New Normal, looking at different aspects of relationship. And today we're going to specifically look at our relationship with children. So I'm not talking to children this morning. I'm talking to you parents or those of you that have children in your lives, maybe a niece or nephew or cousin, or those, about, or those of you thinking about being parents. Before I start, I'm just going to pray really quick. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to speak, and I pray that you would uh, calm my nerves right now, Lord, and that you would speak through me clearly the word that you've laid on my heart, and that hearts would be receptive to this message. In your name, amen. So the, the premise of today is we're going to look at timeless principles for fulfilling healthy relationships with children in the midst of a changing world. How many of you have a grandpa or a dad or a mom that said, you know, being a kid now is so much different than it was when I was a kid? Or you get the classic grandpa response, when I was a kid, I had to walk uphill both ways in the snow. <laughs> they just said that being a kid back then was so much harder, and now we have so much technology and so much other things that it's so much easier to be a kid. And when I looked at society and the new cultural norms, it kind of scared me for what it is like to be a parent. When I was preparing for this message, I was on Yahoo News before I started writing, and I was looking at this news story that came up. It says, two killed in car crash in New York City. And I was looking at it, and I was reading the story, and I just started to cry. It was this new couple. They're both 21 years old. They're on their way in a taxi cab to the hospital, and this BMW crosses over sideswipes them, they're in the back of the taxi, they're ejected, and they're killed, and the baby is saved through a C-section at the hospital. But that baby doesn't have the opportunity to be raised by her parents. And it's just so sad that that's the cultural norm in our society. The TV show 16 and Pregnant, teen moms, single mothers, single fathers, kids being raised by their aunts and uncles, grandpas and grandmas. They're not getting... We looked about a couple weeks ago about marriage, and the, the numbers for marriage are down, and divorce is going up. There's more and more blended families that Pastor Blair is going to talk about next week. There's more blended families. Children aren't getting the same kind of raising, the same kind of childhood that others did back then. The numbers show that. Another thing I looked at is I hear a lot of couples that say that they don't want kids. A lot of couples are getting married or they're living together, but they say, we don't want kids because they're just going to get in the way. They're going to ruin my career. They're going to get in the way of my dreams, my hopes, and there's, there's no purpose for us having kids. Why would we have kids? Why would we go out of our way? We'd just be more busy. We just want to go up in our careers. Another thing I looked at is that people want to give their kids more freedom. I grew up in the church, and a lot of parents will say, well, you know, I really just don't want little Billy to have to come to church. I, don't, I mean, if little Billy wants to go out and drink and party, that's okay with me. Parents aren't setting boundaries with their kids while they're living in their house. They're saying, you know what, they've gotten to a certain age, they're mature enough, they know what to do. They know how to act. I'm not going to force them, I'm not going to make them do anything. And that's really sad to me. And the last one that I think is the most tragic, and we hear it all the time, and sometimes it's a joke, is that kids are a mistake. Maybe somebody's even, maybe your mom or dad has joked that, yeah, you weren't planned, you were a mistake. But the reality is, is that a lot of people have no problem with the act of having a child. They don't like the responsibility that comes with it. And the numbers that, I'm not going to hit abortion that much, but we know that we don't stand for abortion in the church. But the reality is, is that people think that children are a mistake. And I think that's so sad when we get to that point where we think that a child is a mistake. Psalm 139, 13 through 14 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Each person is created for a purpose. Each person that is born, each child that is born, has a distinct purpose. God knit them together in their mother's wombs and they're made for a purpose. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, each child that is born. You are special and unique. When I was growing up, I, I'm not a parent myself, and a lot of you out there might not be parents. And I can't tell you that, from my perspective, that parenting is difficult. But I can tell you that I was a teenager, I was a child just a while ago. And when I was a junior in high school, I, I put my parents through the ultimate test. 
When I was 16 years old, I went to a volleyball game with some friends after an open gym for basketball, and my friends picked me up and they said, hey man, we, we got this beer from a friend. So I said, okay, well, let's go. You know, I, was, I wasn't living the lifestyle that I should have been living first off. <coughs> but on a 30 minute drive, I drank too much beer and I got to the game and I, I puked in the bathroom and there was an off-duty cop in the bathroom. Bad luck, yeah, I know, it kind of sucked, it was bad timing and bad luck, but so I, I, I was arrested and then I was taken to jail and I was watching the World Series with a couple of cops and I was sitting there and I was just thinking about what my mom and what my dad are going to say to me and I was terrified. I knew that my mom had to drive 30 minutes and that she was steaming because she got a call from a police officer that I was in jail. She, I knew she was going to be steaming, but their reaction really shocked me. Yeah, at first my mom laid into me, she was mad at me. But she said, I'm just glad you're okay, and I love you. And then she just wait till your dad gets home. <laughs> you know you're in trouble when your mom says, wait till dad gets home. So I'm sitting in my room, and I, I was probably crying, and my dad gets home. And dad just says, you know what, kid, we all make mistakes. We all fall short, and I love you, and I'm praying for you. And in that moment, I, I just felt like that was the true definition of love is that when we fall short, when we fall short of what our parents' expectations are, and they show us love, yeah, I was disciplined, I got in trouble the next day, but in my time of need, in my time of mistake, my dad loved me. So today we're going to look at some timeless principles. I can't say that parenting is difficult, I know it's difficult. But today I want to give you guys some timeless principles from the Bible that show us what a, what a true parent does, or children, what does it show? talk about children in the Bible. And the first one is that children are a good thing. In Genesis 128, it says that God created man and woman, and then he blessed them. And he said, and all the guys are like, yeah, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. We're like, yeah! <laughs> Once we're married, be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Children are a good thing. We're excited about that, right? Two of you. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> But it says in Psalm 127, 3 through 5, children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Children are a blessing <coughs> to mom and dad. They're not a mistake. They're not a positive thing. They're not, they're not a negative thing. They're not going to ruin your life. Children are a good thing. It says, blessed are those whose quiver is full of them. The second point is that parenting is a balance of love and discipline. Parenting is a balance of love and discipline. See, in our society today, I hear a lot of people say, well, I don't spank my kids. That's wrong. Or like when a, when a kid does get in trouble, well, yeah, he'll learn from his own mistake. He'll learn from it. I mean, he did it. I mean, obviously, he'll learn from it, right? That's what happens. Or a lot of kids aren't getting the love that they need. It's like that night where I was drunk and sitting in my house and I thought my dad was going to come home and be so mad and just yell at me and just dig into me for my mistake. And all he did was show me love. And that's what Jesus does when we come to him. We've all fallen short, but we come to Jesus and he loves us. Yeah, there's going to be discipline. Yeah, there's going to be discipline. It says in Proverbs 29, 17, it says, discipline your children. And they will give you peace. They will bring you the delights you desire. So discipline your children. It's okay to, but do it with love. When I was a little kid, me and my brother would always get in fights. I had an older brother who's two years older than me. I was bigger than him for most of our childhood. So I would, you know, we would fight and we would get in trouble. And then my mom would spank us. She would use a paint stirring stick. Luckily for me, I would always go second because I'm the youngest. So I would go ahead and have time to put another pair of pants on under the ones I was wearing. So I would just pretend like it hurts. So then mom figured out that. You know, you just got to do it right on the bear. So. <laughs> so discipline your children. It's okay, but do it with love. Tell them why you're doing this. It's because I love you and I want you to correct this mistake from you. That's why I do it. I don't not love you because I'm disciplining you. Number three, and this is an important one, is train your children in the ways of the Lord. Parents, are you setting an example for your children? A Christ-like example? Are you following Jesus? Because you know what, your kids are always <coughs> looking at you. Your parents learn, your kids learn your habits from you. The things that you do, they're going to copy and imitate because they're always around you. 
They're so receptive of what you're doing. Are you setting a Christ-like example? And I feel so blessed that I came from a home where my mom and dad were constantly showing me the love of Christ. Constantly showing me the ways of the Lord and how to live a Christ-like life. Are you training your kids in the ways of the Lord? Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7, this is known as the Shema. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Are you impressing these things on your children? Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. That's all the time. Are you impressing these things to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your strength to your children? Are you impressing those things upon them? Proverbs 22, 6 says, Start your children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. And I can tell you from my life, that's, that's true in my life. My parents were constantly impressing on me Jesus and Jesus. But there was a time in my life where I walked away from that. I walked away from what my parents taught me because I thought that I could live my life on my own. I thought I could do things on my own. But that's not reality. And in that time of complete emptiness and loss, when I had fallen so far away from the Lord, I remembered the things that my mom would teach me. I remember those things in, in Bible school, in Bible classes when I was a little kid. I remember those things my parents would teach me. When we would sit, they'd sit at night and tuck me in and say, you know, we're going to pray for you, and we're going to read the Bible to you every night. I would remember those things that they would tell me. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. We need to bring our kids up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. Have you noticed how many churches these days are targeting children? Think about all the churches that you might have been to and how amazing their children's facilities are. Churches are targeting children because if you can get a child to come to ch church, the parents are going to follow. <clears throat> because if their kid really is pushing their parents to come to church, they're going to come to church. That's why churches are targeting little children. And that's where we train them in the ways of the Lord. Are you training your kids in the ways of the Lord? And my final point today is that Jesus invites the little children to Him. If you grew up in the church, you've heard the song a thousand times, Jesus loves the little children. All the little children of the world. He loves the little children. He calls them to Him. In Matthew 19, people were trying to bring their kids to, to Jesus to pray for them and lay hands on them. And the disciples are saying, whoa, 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 what are you guys doing? Don't do that. And this is what Jesus says in Matthew 19, 14. Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. In another example, a chapter back, the disciples are asking Jesus, they're asking who the greatest in the kingdom of heaven is. And Jesus replies to them in Matthew 18, 2 through 5. He called the little child to him and placed a child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name will welcome me. You see, I think sometimes we think that we can't learn anything from children. That we're supposed to train them all the time. We can't learn anything from a child. How can we do that? But how many of you have ever been lost in a store? Like when you were a little kid, you were lost in the store? Do you remember that feeling? Of complete loss? As a child, you, are, you have an innocence to you. You have complete trust in your parents that they're going to do everything for you, that they're going to provide every need for you. And then when you, when you see a little kid saying, Mommy, Mommy, where are you? And they're alone in the store, they're completely lost. They're terrified. They don't know where they're going. I remember that feeling. It was miserable. All I wanted was my mom. And I think there's some of you in the crowd today that have that feeling. You're lost. You have an empty feeling inside and you don't know where to go. You're looking for something, and you don't know what it is. On Monday, I got a FaceTime with my little niece. She's two years old. She's my only niece. And we were sit sitting there FaceTiming. She lives in Montana. And they were talking to her, and they said, Hey, Aislinn, where does Jesus live? And she looked at me, and she's looking in the screen. She says, Uncle Steve, Jesus lives in my heart. 
two and a half years old, that broke my heart. It was the sweetest thing that I've ever heard. Little kids have such an innocence. They have such a trust in the parents that everything is going to be okay. That even when they don't know what's going on, even when they're lost, they have a complete trust in their parent. And we can learn that in our relationship with Jesus. If you're out there today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, the reality is, is that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We're all in need of a relationship with Jesus. Will you come to yourself, not seeking power like the disciples, not seeking authority with Jesus, but will you come to Him with an open heart, saying, Lord, I need you. I'm, I don't know what to do. Can I put my trust in you, Lord? I need you more today than I've ever needed you in my life. I want a relationship with you. And today I want to pray with you. It says in Romans 10, 9, that if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. It's such a simple thing to say, but it's such a powerful thing to believe. Today I'm going to pray with you. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to come up front. But simply, while I'm praying, if you just want to declare that, that Jesus is Lord, and that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. I'm going to pray. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this day. And I thank you that you call us your children. That you are our Heavenly Father. We are children of God. And that you love us so much that you sent your own Son, Jesus, to die for us. Lord, I pray those, for those in the crowd that maybe don't know you. They're lost. They need someone to put their trust and their hope in, Lord. And I pray that during this time that they would just confess with their mouth that they believe in you. And that you died for us and you rose again. Lord, I thank you for this day, and I pray for those who are speaking after me that you would bless them. We thank you so much that you love us. In your name, amen. Amen.